Here may I reflect on another quote of um, Garvey. The ends you serve that are selfish will take you no further than yourself. But the ends you serve that are for all in common will take you into eternity. Let us reflect on that and truly honor him by serving our brother. You know that principle of Ubuntu, I am because you are, as we go through our own lives. At this time, we would love, I'm honored to introduce our third community service award, perhaps the biggest one this evening. Um, it will, it's, it's a posthumous award. And so before I make the announcement, we will go to a video. And I'm disturbed the thing, but I have to come here and give respect to Marcus Gavin Jr. Because Marcus Gavin Jr. used to teach me at Kingston Technical High School. It's like years ago, see. Years. I was in Gambia three weeks ago with his brother, Julius Garvey. And I must pay my respect to this man because this man is why I'm so terrible. Yes, he was in Kingston Technical and I was a part, a member of his organization and he was the one that introduced me to his mother, E.M.J. Garvey at 12 Mona Road and we have been, through the inspiration of Marcus Garvey Jr. I have been going through this awareness and black consciousness from that time at Kingston Technical until now. So we want to pay respect to Marcus Garvey Jr. who brought me to this point in my life. To give thanks. Marcus Garvey Jr. Elder of the two sons of Marcus and Amy Jax Garvey was born in St. Andrew, Jamaica on September 17, 1930. He became the seventh president general of the UNIA, succeeding to the office once held by his father, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey, national hero of Jamaica. Marcus Garvey Jr., as you would have heard from Muta Baruka, taught mathematics and physics at high schools in Jamaica, at the University of the West Indies in Kingston, and at City and Hunter Colleges in New York. He lectured extensively on Garveyism and the UNIA, and articulated a similar message of African nationalism as previously propounded by Edward Blyton, Bishop Henry Turner, and his world-famous father. Marcus Garvey Jr. passed on to the African ancestors on December 8, 2020, at 90 years of age. In the 1920s, Marcus Garvey Sr. told his followers that they should teach the higher development of science to their children. With his academic degrees and technical skill sets, Marcus Garvey Jr. was the fulfillment of that instruction and exemplified the mix of academics and activism that best serves black African communities worldwide. Hence, this posthumous Lifetime Achievement Award from Roots Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and I'd love to introduce Mrs. Jean, Ms. Jean Garvey, who has resided in Florida for the past 20 years and is past president of her local homeowners association in the village of Wellington in West Palm Beach, where she resided with her husband of more than 30 years, the late Marcus Garvey Jr. Brethren and sistering, please put your hands together and welcome Mrs. Jean Garvey to receive this award. Yeah. You see why we love this part of the program. This is the most important part of, you know, the Roots Extravaganza. Acknowledging the people who so much deserve it, you know. Marcus Garvey Jr. did his part. I think that family, the Garvey family, produced peer heroes because the surviving son, Julius Garvey, is another powerhouse in of himself. You know, 
So the Roots Foundation is privileged and honored to give this posthumous award to Marcus Garvey Jr. for his many years of selfless, exceptional, and exemplary service to the Pan-African community. <laughs> to be received by his lovely wife, Ms. Jean Garvey. Thank you so much, Brother Jabulani, my very favorite Consul General, and to Savoy, who is a legislative aide for Commissioner Chambers, who just happened to not be able to be make it here today. So, good evening to all my fellow awardees, my friends fellow Garveyites, and community service people. It is certainly my pleasure to be among this august group of Garvey scholars, entertainers, community workers, and volunteers. I am honored and humbled to be accepting this humanitarian award posthumously for my late husband, Marcus Garvey, Jr. I'll tell you a little bit about Marcus, Jr., most of you have heard some of it before. I'll leave the history of Garvey Sr. and the UNIA and ACL to our esteemed Garvey scholar, Dr. Carolyn Cooper, UWI Professor Emerita, who will be addressing you later tonight. Marcus Garvey Jr. was born on September 17, 1930, and joined the ancestors on December 8, 2020. He was 90 years old. I'll go into a little of his early life. As a child, he was intellectually curious. He was an avid reader at an early age where he was exposed to an extensive library in his parents' household. He was intellectually gifted, studied hard, and was an excellent student. In high school, he spoke fluent Latin. Can you believe Latin, what most people call the dead language? And perfect English. His command of the English language was par excellence. He later studied Spanish, which he also spoke fluently. By the time he was 19 years old, he had earned his first degree as an external candidate at the University of London believed to be the first in the Caribbean Commonwealth at that time. He earned degrees in English and economics. Because of his excellence in academics, he was awarded a government scholarship to study at the University of London. By the time he was 25, he had earned his law degree from the same university and was articled at the famous Gray's Inn. For those of you not familiar with the British system, that's like going to the Supreme Court. His preferred interest, however, was in the sciences. He would tell everyone, oh, I don't want to be a lawyer. And uh, since everyone had pegged him to be the follow-up politician to his father, they thought a law degree was necessary. He earned it just to please his mother, but never, ever wanted to be a barrister, as he said. He later earned degrees in the fields of mathematics, physics, and electrical engineering, fulfilling his father's wish for science and technology. He focused mainly on fiber optics, which at the time was just coming around, and the analysis and design of navigational guidance systems. He has been published in the prestigious science journal, Nature. Upon retirement from corporate America, he returned to his love of teaching as an adjunct professor in colleges and universities of the system of New York. He taught mathematics, physics, electrical, and aeronautical engineering. Being the elder of the two sons of Marcus Garvey Sr., his father's legacy fell heavily on his shoulders. They were very big shoes to fill. 
but like his father, he was self-confident, committed, and embraced the cause for which he stood, Pan-Africanism and African redemption. Marcus Jr. was involved in local politics in Jamaica. He even revived the People's Political Party started by his late father. In 1986, he launched his own party, the African Nationalist Union. After major political upheavals in Jamaica in the late 60s and 70s, and many death th threats, I shouldn't say that publicly, but it did happen, <laughs> Marcus Jr. left Jamaica to protect his then wife and two small children. He migrated to the USA to pursue his PhD in the field of physics. In the US, he became a member of the local New York division of the UNIA and ACL, as well as the parent body of the organization. After serving for many years as head of the local group, and his participation at the parent body level, he was elected president general and administrator of the organization, following in the footsteps of his esteemed father. He was elected the seventh president general at the 39th International Convention in 1992. Our brother Nana Redmond Battle became the eighth president general. I saw him on screen, I know him very well. And he is also with the ancestors today. He served as head of the organization for 12 years, from 1992 to 2004, but later resigned due to ill health. During his tenure as head of the organization, he successfully addressed several issues the organization was experiencing at the time. These revolved around declining membership, managerial incompetence, and a host of other structural problems. He set about rectifying these ills by instituting classes on building leadership skills, organizational competencies, reporting skills, building best business practices, community involvement, and re-establishing training classes in the philosophy of his late father. His accomplishments were highly regarded during his 12-year reign. Many new divisions were chartered while membership increased threefold. The UNIA and ACL was on track to regain some of its old glory. Some of the sacrifices that you don't hear publicly. Marcus was a strong proponent of the participation and role that women played in the organization and was often dependent on and collaborated with them in order to get things done. He often said, if you want things done, give it to the women. He was in, the, huh? Let's, He was in the process of reviving the Black Cross Nurses Fraternity because of the crucial role they played taking care of the health of community members. Under his leadership, women were elected to key positions at all levels within the organization. His respect for their contributions was notable and lauded by all. At home, Many sacrifices were also made to assist Marcus in his successful role as administrator. We both had full-time jobs outside of the UNIA and would always have to juggle schedules to accommodate tasks of the organization. Examples include attended meetings out of town, conducting and teaching classes in best business practices and leadership skills to local leaders where needed. Because of my business background, I was always called upon for input and help in developing programs and teaching division personnel. The political climate also produced challenges in the form of tapped home phones and security measures. At home, I was Marcus's helper, advisor, booking agent, secretary, coordinator, 
program developer, and general helper in all administrative tasks. Although we often traveled together, the demands of my job required me to meet him sometimes in far off cities as well as close by ones for meetings, functions, and speaking engagements. We often talked about how fortunate we were to not have small children to add to the challenges of raising a family at that particular time. Mr. Garvey was known as a strong, no-nonsense intellect. However, there is another side of the man known mostly to his family and close friends. He was a fun-loving partner when not in his professional roles. He told all his friends and family that after all this time, he had finally found the love of his life and extolled her virtues and intellect. We were the perfect pair, he would tell everyone. At home, he cooked, loved to eat, loved traveling, was a fitness buff who took care of his body and engaged in daily fitness activities. He also liked classical music and opera, but could get down dancing to reggae, ballroom, and calypso music. He loved to dance and would often dance all night when attending galas or other such functions. He also played dominoes and was very competitive, even when playing with friends and family. He enjoyed all types of music. He was also a very caring person and would always help the less fortunate among us. He spent his monies trying to make life easier for those in need. He didn't care much for material things. All he wanted was a clean bed to sleep in. He felt his monies could be better spent helping others. In all his years as President General and Administrator of the UNIA, he never took a salary and spent his own funds on travel and hotels when necessary. Although we had a blended family, my daughter from my first marriage, I was a divorcee when I married Marcus, and his two sons from his first marriage. He never referred to the children or grandchildren as steps. Each one was treated equally and lovingly. Family time was always fun, filled with food, jokes, games, and competitive activities. He has left a great void and will never be filled. The family suffered a great loss and still mourn his passing. We miss him deeply, but his memory will be with us forever. Marcus Garvey Jr. transitioned to the ancestors on December 8, 2020, and is no doubt in the whirlwind where he was welcomed by his esteemed father, saying, well done, my son. Rest in eternal peace, my beloved Marcus. One God, one aim, one destiny. Thank you so much, Mrs. Garvey, and as a family, we stand with her as she continues to mourn her husband.